entrepreneurs in general, right, one of the biggest things that cripples them is a lack of singular focus. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, as soon as you sell a thousand books, everybody coming to you like, you need to do the book on this. Yeah. What about the book on that? What about the book on that? So you start thinking about all the other books. Yeah. Then somebody like, teach me how to do the book. Mm -hmm. And then you like, man, my book just got released last month. Right. But now I'm book coach extraordinaire, I'm right? I'm, I'm, the guru. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm coach. So literally, <laughs> right, we're so programmed that, hey, now I got to have multiple streams of income. What yeah. they create is multiple streams of struggle, Ooh. right? Yeah. Like, like that's all these streams that ain't streams because ain't nothing flowing through none of them. Right. I tell people all the time, the main number one reason, can I share the number one reason Please. most entrepreneurs never build a seven-figure business? Please, talk to me. Even, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clarify, the main reason most successful, they mean they got something going. Yeah. Successful entrepreneurs can't get to a million dollars a year mm -hmm. in revenue in their business is because they got two or three $100,000 businesses. Oh, say that, yeah. So they chasing all these small things and yeah. chasing all them different small things is stopping you from getting to the one big thing that you can just lock in on and go hard on. Hey, hey, wait, wait, I know y'all wanna get to this next episode and it's a dope episode, but listen, if you are watching this, you're about to watch someone who's a multimillionaire, somebody who is an entrepreneur, somebody who's a mover and shaker, but I know that you also have a story that could get you on the same show, but even, even better, creating multiple streams of income from your story. So listen, I need you to text me my book, to the number 646-687-4152. That's my personal number. Text my book to that number and I am going to personally mentor you and help you to create a book that will give you multiple streams of income. So again, text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, let's go watch the show. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man adds cash. So get your man right Thursday night. 8 p.m. to see him change your life. Millionaire mind set the best on earth. Blueprints of wealth and knowledge network. To get it while you can and he's standing right here. Just come and sat the phone to see black millionaires. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come and sat the phone to see black millionaires. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You won't ask cash, you can catch it right here in the ball. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, there's a lot of people that got couple goals. Some people look at the Obamas. Some people got the Carters. Well, I have the Tylers in the building. Uh, when I tell you uh, this is a power couple, this is the power couple of power couples. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to have them in the building. Uh, Ms. Ronnie Tyler, thank you so much for being here. My thank brother you. Lamar, thank hey. you. Um, man, I don't even know where to start. For those who don't know, who is Lamar and Ronnie Tyler? Tell them, babe. Hey. <laughs> she hates <laughs> he it when I do that. That's why I'm a startup. <laughs> so uh, we're the creators and founders of several online brands, right? All around the focus of supporting, uplifting, encouraging the black community. Um, our first large brand, blackandmarriedwithkids.com, we launched in December 2007, promote positive images of marriage in the black community to show that, hey, guess what? It's black folks out here loving each other, contrary to what media say, to what the public say, to what you see on TV. We wanted to show that it's black fathers here taking care of their kids and oftentimes someone else's kids too at the same time. And in that morph, we built um, a very public brand with that, um, featuring a ton of press, work with many of America's largest brands and we built a business and people saw us build like the business in front of them. So what they said is, hey, teach us how to do what you do. So then we launched a brand traffic sales and profit in 2015, uh, community over 30,000 purpose driven black entrepreneurs. Um, as of now through our programs, right? Our, our key programs, we've helped 24 black businesses get to seven figures mm. in revenue. And everything we do is all around building that community. Love it, love it, love it. And, and so my, my first introduction um, you know, to the Tylers was uh, generation one, generation one. Yep. Right. Uh, so as a financial educator, um, I saw that and I was like, oh, right, because you know I started out in this game uh, when there wasn't really that much focus on black wealth, right? Like literally, I remember my, my first year uh, writing a book. I was going to different media outlets trying to have them uh, promote my book, and I had. A producer tell me black people do not want to learn about money, right? He will he will he will he will remain nameless because he's doing some big things now. So I'm a, <laughs> I ain't remember our conversation though, but that's another thing. But talk to me about generation uh, generation one. Like what was the 
um, you know, the reason around, you know, you know, creating that film? Um, you know, really, it came from just like studying our audience, right? And that was the, the biggest thing that Lamar and I began to do with our audience is to understand what their needs were. And so we looked into, you know, we had other documentary films and they were about relationships. But when we looked into the need of the black community and looked at the wealth gap, we thought, okay, we should do a movie about like, just building generational wealth. And so that is it. Um, it became our biggest movie, even though we focused on relationships and couples, I think that movie really resonated with our audience and with um, the black community wanting to understand about how to build wealth. Yeah, and it, it was that thing, right? We were trying to figure out how to get ahead, but so many times the black community, we're behind because of lack of information. Mm. That's why I love what you're doing, right? You're, giving the, you, you're teaching the people and training the people, but a lack of information. So what we've seen time and time again is that if you provide education for the community, they eat it up. Mm. The whole thing has been, we've been separated from the education on purpose mm -hmm. so that we don't get access to it. We get access to the education, then guess what? Then we get access to the money, we get access to the wealth. We get access to wealth, then our communities start to change. Mm -hmm. Then everything around us starts to change. We begin to create real legacy, right? We talk about legacy all the time. What does that really look like? Mm -hmm. and, and it all starts with education. Mm -hmm. And before that, even mindset. All right, mindset, you talk, you talk my language, you talk my language, and so what has been um, the biggest barrier um, in changing the mindset of the people that we serve, right? Because when you think about, um, there's two narratives, right? There's this narrative of black and married, and you know, you know, strengthening the, the you know, the black community. But then there's also uh, the narrative of uh, building wealth, right? Uh, you know, helping people build wealth through businesses. Um, what have been some of the um, barriers around mindset that you, you, you've seen in you know, working in your business? So my biggest thing is people just being able to see it, mm. right? Just being able to be around people that are actually successful. So the first thing was being around people that are successful in their marriages, right? Mm. So that's what we started out in understanding that there are relationships out there. There are couples out there that are working together. Mm. Um, so being able to see it and be around it and then get educated about it was the biggest thing. And I think that's the biggest thing also with um, being entrepreneurs and business is if you can be around and surround yourself in, with around communities of people that are doing it, then it becomes more attainable for you. So me, the mindset is just like being around it and being able to see it. Yeah, no, nah, I love it, love it, love it. And exactly what Ronnie said, so being able to see it. So that's why we did seven full of documentary films. That's why we use a lot of video on what we do. That's why like, I watch your show, because oftentimes our community, they need to physically see it in front of them because a lot of us didn't grow up with it. So even for us to be entrepreneurs, I didn't have entrepreneurs in my family. So for me to figure out how to build a profitable multiple seven figure business, we had to dig into it and go outside, sometimes outside of the community, right? To say, hey, wherever the money is, wherever the resources is, wherever the information is, we gotta get it and bring it back. I always like to say now, one of my, my, my favorite slogans, the gatekeepers are gone, mm. right? Due to the rise of technology um, and the lowering cost of what it takes to get things done, what it takes to get a website built, mm. right? 10, 15 years ago, 10, 15 grand to get a website. Yeah. Now you can go on a website for $50, $5 yeah. for free, right? Yeah. Get access to a website that look just like Coca-Cola's website or something, mm -hmm. right? Um, also at the same time, the rise of social media. For the first time ever, we can connect directly with the consumer. Yeah. So for so many, really forever, you had to do what? Go through a middleman. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to be a musician, you had to go through a label. If you wanted to be, like we did documentary films, if we wanted to create films, we would have had to go to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. What do we look like going to Hollywood and saying, hey, Hollywood, we got documentaries about black families, black couples. Yeah. They loving each other. Right. They taking care of their kids. They taking care of their stepkids. Yeah. Did that look like something that would get the green light? Right. Of course not, right? But what we found is that when we created our own docs, mm. when we pressed them up out of disc makers in Jersey by ourselves, mm. when we sold them online, when we did our own seven, eight, nine, ten city tours, Atlanta, DC, Houston, Chicago on the South Side, in black theaters in Chatham, um, uh, Dallas, Houston, Baltimore, wherever, right? Guess what happened? Sellouts mm. every single time because black folks were hungry yes. for the information. Yes. But again, right, we can't listen to what other people tell us. We have to go out, create our own products, and we have to fit the need that we know our community has. No, I love it. And, and you're still selling DVDs to now. This day until the wheels Yo, that's fall off. <laughs> like, like I, so, so we're gonna talk about that building. <laughs> we're gonna talk about that beautiful building that, that you guys have, right? But I, I went into there 
and we I was in your storage room. And I'm like, yo, why this dude? I'm like, I, like these, these still look fresh. These look like a fresh pack of DVDs. And y'all still selling DVDs. How? Like, what, like people still have DVD players. We, we are shipping DVDs. We shipping books. Again, people think, right? Like, oh, I think people not watching DVDs. I think people not reading physical books. I think this and think that. Yeah. What you got to follow is the data. Absolutely. Right? What you got to follow is the revenue. So when we stop selling DVDs, that'll be the day people stop buying DVDs. Mm. But right now, they still buying them. When it slowed down, what we did is we said, hey, right, because some people said, you know, the millennials, right? Millennials ain't out, they're not about this DVD life. Right, right. I'm a grown man, right? I still got a, you know, I'm, right. I'm in my 40s. I got a DVD player at right. home tucked away somewhere. Millennials not about that. Right. So when people said, hey, you know, uh, uh, I want to see the movie. I want to see Generation 1, The Search right. of Black Wealth, but I don't have a DVD player. What we did is we included the stream along with it, mm. some additional digital assets, nice. so we still could sell it at DVD prices. Nice. Because nice. we want to make DVD money, not streaming money, uh -huh. right? We can, like the profit margins are way higher. We can make way more with DVD. Yeah. So we bundle it up all together. We ship it to you. Whether you watch the DVD or not, mm. you still can get a stream code, yeah. but we can make more per disc off of it. I love that. I love that. And one of the things that I, that I appreciate about, uh, you know, your brand and what you guys do um, is the fact that you said, right, we follow the data, right? So it's not really about what makes us look good and make us look popular is really what is going to sustain us as a business, right? And so when somebody looks at your brand, that's why I say like y'all the power couple of power couples, because when you look at your brand and what you were able to do, it's not really about popularity, right? It's about that purpose, it's about following the data. Can you talk a little bit about that, the, the importance of, um, you know, not following the optics and trying to make yourself look like you're popping and really pop, right? Like, can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, it's so tempting, right, yeah, to, yeah. to go out and get the nice car and yeah. make it pop on, on Instagram. But really, we really are about um, serving and uplifting the community yeah. and also just kind of being responsible with our funds. So we just want to be consistent with our messaging as far as how we're living and what we want to portray to our audience. Mm -hmm. But it is really about the data. You know, when we started um, Black and Married with Kids, we actually started giving our artists what we thought they wanted and what we thought brands wanted them to have. And so we would do a lot of articles about food and about parenting. But when we really started to really look at the data and when Lamar started really go digging into digital marketing and we learned like we can serve our own audience. We just need to find out like what they need. Um, then we started to reframe it and we said, okay, they want to learn about communication. They want to learn about infidelity. They want to learn about money. And so if you go out to our site now, you see that information. And then we went away from what we thought people wanted and what was fun to really what fit their needs. Uh, yeah. and, and I think everybody watching this episode, what they need to figure out is do I want to be popular? Or do I want to be profitable? Uh. Can I repeat that one time, Please, right? Because they, they need to listen. It's a big bar. Do you want to be popular? Or do you want to be profitable? Because yeah. at the same time of that, right, we're like, we're looking, it, it's crazy. Um, as a community, I think we're just getting turned on to the fact that we can hire a coach, we can hire a consultant, somebody that's already been there and they can get us there faster. Mm -hmm. But we're doing it all wrong. Mm -hmm. Most of the time now when people look, they saying, okay, I want to hire the coach. It looked like they got the most money. Mm -hmm. But that's not how you hire a coach. You hire a coach where the people that work under them, right, that come through them, who are those people that got the most money, mm -hmm. right? It's not about how much money the coach make, it's about how much money the people that he coaches make, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, like, but we got, it, we got it mixed up. I had a client one time, it said, well, Lamar, you know, um, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do all this in my business because I want to be Rolls Royce, right? Like, my, my product is a Rolls Royce. Yeah. I said, I don't want to be Rolls Royce. Mm. I want to be Toyota. Mm. Rolls Royce did about, you know, 15, 16 billion last year, right? Yeah. And that, that's cool. But let's take it up a level. Rolls Royce is owned by BMW. BMW owns BMW, Rolls Royce, they own the mini cars, all that, right? BMW all together did about 116 billion, right? Mm. Toyota did somewhere between 250 and 280 billion dollars. Mm. So oftentimes we look at the, the, our conception of what we Ooh. see outside, <laughs> don't make no sense. Yeah, yeah. Cause we not looking at the data, we looking at emotions. And if yeah. I control your emotions, I can control you. So that's heavy. That's heavy. I don't know if y'all need to unpack that real quick, right? Because I hear that saying all the time, like, yo, I want to be Rolls Royce. But that's true, right? Is that uh, Rolls Royce gives you, you know, yeah, I mean, if you sat in a, in a Rolls, right, and be, yeah. you know, stars, but you know, make you feel good, like, you know. But at the end of the day, when you think about from a company perspective, 
um, it makes sense to be Toyota, right? It makes sense to, you know, to look at the data, to look at and say, all right, you know, this is the value that Toyota is bringing. It's able to bring in more profit, more revenue. Um, and so I love that. I love that example. And so, uh, tra- so I want to talk about traffic first and foremost, right? Because, you know, the, you know, your company, which is very successful, traffic, sales, and profit, right? Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize the importance of of traffic. Um, they don't they don't um, recognize the importance of um, getting. You know, we just build, right? Right, and we think that I right, I built this and now I'm good. Talk to us about traffic first and foremost. Like, why is it imperative that everybody who has a business should be focusing on getting eyes or getting people to see that business? Right, because if no one sees it, you can't sell it. (laughs) That's number one, right? And um, I focus on launching and planning launches a lot of times in our business. And people don't worry about the fact that they have no traffic or audience until after the product is built and they have no one to sell it to. Uh And so we tell people to focus on building your audience, building your um, community and getting traffic to your business all year round. So that's like a baseline that you want to cons- consistently focus on just mm-hmm. so that you can get eyes on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like Ryan said, that's big, right? We have people coming in all the time. And they say, well, I'm not making money in my product business or my service business, no matter what it is. And the first thing we say is, well, how many people actually saw your offer? Mm-hmm. How many people got to your website? How many people got in your event? Because most of the time they're not even putting their offer in front of enough people to logically make it make sense, right? Because at the end of the day, everything is just, a, back to the data, everything is a numbers game. Yeah. So when we look at traffic, I tell people all the time, right? The first time I heard this, it blew my mind. One of my mentors, Jermaine Grigg said, you know, Lamar, it's, it's three ways to drive more traffic. I said, what are the three ways? He said, you can build it, you can borrow it, you can buy it. Mm-hmm. And when you break down those three ways, right, building it is the organic. Building it is I'm doing my IG lives. I'm doing my my Facebook lives, right? I'm out here. Basically, it's the digital version of shaking hands and kissing babies. Mm -hmm. Person by person, uh, you out there in the streets making it happen. Now, the thing about that is those people that come through that way or your ride or die. Mm-hmm. They there for life, they like, man, I remember when Ash was still in Harlem before he left us and went to Atlanta, right? Those are people that love you. The thing about it is that's the slow way. Mm-hmm. And I know as people watching this now, it's like, I've been doing all of that, yeah. but I'm only getting three, four people in my audience a day. Mm-hmm. And my email list only growing 20, 30 people a month and I can't sustain my business like this. Mm-hmm. Well, the two other ways are faster. You can borrow audience. That's going to people that already have your, your demographic, your psychograph. They've already built a community of the people you want to target. Mm-hmm. And they've already did the hard work. And a lot of these people don't even know how to monetize those audiences that they built. But you can go in and tap into their audience leading with what's the value for them, right? Can you um, give them a split of revenue that you bring in? Can you create something that they need? Maybe they need content. Maybe they need information. Maybe they need um, some of your shine, some of your community, whatever it is. But you tapping into people already built what you want. And then the last thing, you can buy it. That's your Facebook ads, that's your Instagram ads, that's your Google ads. The great thing about that is that's like the, the water faucet. You cut it on, and the traffic come, mm. right? Now, you cut it on, you better know what you're doing because right. you can make money, you can lose money, right. but you can get it quick. And, and literally, like Ronnie said, before you have any, like you got to offer this great, it's a lot of people have a lot of great things. When they get in front of people, they can sell it, but they just can't get in front of enough people. Mm. And so, um, what would you say is the biggest mistake that you've seen uh, that small business owners, people who, who may be just starting out or building their business, what's the biggest mistake that they've made while trying to you know, build their business and, and take it to that next level? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Y'all looked at each other with sacred, like, oh. <laughs> how long is the show? Right, how long right? is the show? Where, 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 where you want me to start? I'll say one and then Lamar can say one. I'll say not being consistent. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, they have a great product, they have a great idea, but they're not consistent. They're not um, professional enough, informal enough with themselves. And so they're working today, they're not working tomorrow. Just not being professional and being consistent. Uh Uh That's what I'll say. I'm gonna say that it's a lot of people that have product and service, but don't like to sell. Right? And Say they that. like, like, Say man, like selling is, is icky. I don't like it. Yeah, I feel yeah. sleazy, right? And all this stuff. Yeah. But what they got to realize is that if they can't sell, they can't serve. Mm. 
Can I say that one more That's time, right? Boy, yo, he bought, yo, he bought up. Me. If, if, if they can't sell, they can't serve. Yeah. So if I want to impact the lives of black women all across the globe, I have to be able to sell the concept of what I have, right? The product or service I have overcomes the challenge or the issue or the situation that they're dealing with. Yeah. If I can't get them to believe that and believe in me and believe in the product, they'll never get hold of what I have that actually can help them. Mm. So we got to even change again, right? What's the word? Mindset, Mindset yes. around how we view selling to realize that, hey, when we sell something, as long as you're selling something, of, if you're selling something of quality and substance, yeah. you're serving people, but you can't serve nobody if you can't get it in their hand. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And so now, right, talk to me about that beautiful building that you guys have, because I, so it was, it was inspiration. So I remember, uh, you know, I was talking to our brother Julian Gordon, and I was like, yo, man, you know, this year I'm going to buy a building, I'm going to create my own studio. And he was like, yo, you been to Lamar's yet? I was like, nah. So I hit Lamar immediately like, bro, <laughs> I need to go in there. And, and the moment um, I got to the spot, um, it was so inspirational, right? And like, it, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about like breathtaking inspirational. Like, not like, oh, oh yeah, you got your little building. And I'm talking about like, nah, this is like next level. So talk, talk a little bit. It had to be Ronnie that, no disrespect. It, yeah. got, it, it had to be Ronnie <laughs> touch on that. But talk, talk a little bit about I mean, I'd be tight with the money, so Lamar, yeah, well, Lamar right, had the vision. You know, we still be home on our laptops, fighting like, man, It you know. works. It's working. We wouldn't have no. had a high-speed internet. We'd be on a dial-up, fighting. Oh, like, you taking it too far. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Oh, too far. <laughs> yeah. She didn't want to pay for gas to get here today. Oh, look, She was trying to ride the look, water. There we go. Look, there oh, we no, go. Let's play, let's play, let's play. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, but it was. I mean, he helped me to see the vision because it is inspirational. And it's not only inspiring us to do better, to go to, to go higher, but also our employees and then anybody that comes into the building. But Lamar can tell you just about how, you know, even purchasing build, buildings and real estate, how it's just even taken off in our community. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you what's great. Again, earlier we talked about like a lot of times you got to see it in order to be it. Yeah. So we were somewhere leasing um, office space for, you know, we're like, hey, we're going to be three, four years. We're going to move. Right. Five, six years later. That's how it normally work. We're still there. Um, building equity in somebody else, right? It's an asset Absolutely. for them, it's an expense for us. Yeah. And we go to a client's building, Cal and Renee, right? They got a financial services. So we go to theirs and they like, yeah, we, we bought this. Mm -hmm. And we're looking around and we're like, what you mean when you bought it, right? Yeah. And they're like, nah, we own this. So as we're walking around looking and we start to do the math, we realize that in this office park, they're probably paying less for their mortgage mm -hmm. than we're paying every month for rent mm -hmm. for our actual office. Mm -hmm. So then, like, just the seed, right, mindset, again, and it, it's so many times in our community, it's so much we haven't been exposed to yet. Mm -hmm. Yet, because it's all, it's a new generation coming through that's exposing a lot of people, just like you do with the show now. Mm -hmm. But we hadn't been exposed to that. So just because we had the seed planted then, we did the numbers and we said, oh, we could easily do this. Yeah. And now we're not paying down somebody else's mortgage or their investment. We creating our own wealth. We have assets to ourselves. So we got the building. We did renovations. We work with one of our clients, Nikki Clue from Nikki Clue Design Group, to come in and we said, we want a space that speaks to black excellence. Mm -hmm. When you walk in this door, you know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. I said, Nikki, like, I'm, I want you here. Cause I said, I want a training room. In the training room, I don't want no church tables. Yeah. I don't want no six foot folders. I don't want no folding chairs. Right. I want excellence. And, yeah. and I wanted people when they, when they walk in to feel like this is what excellence is, right? Yeah. The training center, we named it the Rosewood Training Center mm -hmm. after the town in Florida, right? That was a thriving town that was burnt down because black folks was too successful there. Yeah. And literally every step that we make, whether it's the building, whether it's traffic sales and profit, our conferences, we know that we stand on the shoulders of greatness, mm -hmm. our ancestors that never could have imagined that we would be here where we are today, but guess what, we are gonna put on for them. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that, I love that. And so, this is the question everybody wanna know. Multiple seven figure business, and y'all still look relatively happy. Y'all work with each other all the time. What's the secret to being able to work with your partner, but still enjoy your partner at the same time? I'm still mad at him. I'm just okay, I'm about to say, I'm like, what you talking about? We don't even like each we other. Was fighting in the car on the way here, Jack. Not on sure. the corner. Because she wouldn't give me the gas. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I think the secret, number one, is doing what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I think a lot of couples um, 
Well, first, let me back up from that number one. And the first number one is you have to have a solid relationship Mm -hmm. because a good marriage can cause a good business. But a bad marriage can definitely ruin a business. Mm -hmm. Right. And so make sure your marriage is tight. And I think that Black and Married with Kids really helped us Mm -hmm. because it helped us set the foundation for a good relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go into business with somebody you can't trust Mm -hmm. and you can't communicate with, you know. And so um, I think I think the things that make a good marriage also make good business partners as well, because Mm -hmm. You cannot have a better business partner than your spouse. Uh-huh. You definitely want to be with someone that's going to be ride or die, pick up the pieces, and just be there. So when our employees don't want it to come through, it's like, okay, we got this, uh-huh. like together. Uh-huh. Um, so that's the first thing, a solid relationship. The second thing is do what you say you're going to do. Uh-huh. Be a little bit more formal with each other. We have meetings, um, notes, calendar entries, everything like that, uh-huh. because we want to make sure that we are just consistent. And I feel like a lot of couples drop the ball, leave a lot of things on their spouse. Uh-huh. Oh, they're going to do it or whatever. And it just calls, causes a lot of problems. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and piggyback what Ronnie said, right? What she said something was key and I want to make sure everybody get it. The things that make for a great business partner, uh-huh. right? Make for a great relationship too. Uh-huh. Can I trust you? Uh-huh. Yeah. When you say you're going to do something, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Uh-huh. Um, can we work together? Can we communicate? We, we not going to always agree on which direction the business to go in. So can we talk it out and get to a place where we both cool, right? And that's the same thing in working relationship. Then when you're working with your spouse, hopefully, unlike a business partner, me and you, we can go in business together and we can be two great brothers. But you might have one goal that impacts your family one way. And, and I might say, hey, my kids are older. I'm about to be an empty nester. My goal could be totally different. When you got a couple, hopefully, in a good relationship, you got the same goal. And, and as Ronnie talked about, when they come together for, for I know, because I know people always hit us up and be like, well, you know, my husband, my wife, they won't do this, they won't do that. It's also not looking at other couples and expecting with your relationship in the way you interact with each other to be like them. Yeah. So if they see, um, oh, you know, this cousin, him, uh, this couple, him and her, and they're always on stage and they speak together, mm-hmm. then the wife looking at the husband like, but you can't speak though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't trying to get on the stage and dudes like, I just want to be behind the scenes. Right. But you know, like, like really these, these unfair expectations we put on each other. Yeah. And, and the last thing I'll say about it is a lot of times we run into individuals who say, Hey, my spouse won't be on board with me. Uh-huh. Like I would love to bring them into the business. They won't be on board. And a lot of times what I say is that they're not on board because they know you. Uh-huh. These people on Instagram don't know you. Uh-huh. Your spouse has seen you consistently not show up. Your spouse, remember when you said you was getting the gym fitness and you was doing the 30 day, Uh you know, this, this and that online and and you was going to be ripped for the summer. Right. And you put on 20 right. doing COVID, right? right. right. They, they seen right. you get the treadmill. Well, you, take, you taking shots at me? And, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they seen you get the treadmill and not use it. Yeah. They seen you go to the conferences and not implement nothing. Yeah. So now after, you know, years of, of all of this inconsistency, you expect your spouse to jump on board when you say this is the big business idea when you've had 20 big business uh. ideas. So if you want to get a spouse on board that's not, or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, on board that's not, what I say is get success. Mm. Success draws people to it, mm. right? Yep. You start getting to the money, the joker, it ain't never want to do nothing, yeah, or yeah, sis ain't never yeah. want to do nothing, now they looking for business cards. Exactly. Now they want to join you. They want to ride shotgun, right? They yeah. Now all of a sudden they the COO. Yeah. Ain't never touching nothing. So, so get to success, yeah. and then that opens up people's minds, and it showed them that, hey, you're being consistent, you're being real with this thing, this thing got legs, and they start to look for a way they can be a part of it. Yeah, no, I love that. And, and, and Ronnie, you, you touched on this a little bit, um, but I wanted you to expand a little more on the power of community, right? Because, um, you know, your community is a strong community. I'm part of the community too. Uh, And so I watch, you know, all the trainings that you guys do. Um, You know, you put a call to action out. Not only you're not the only ones running it, there's a bunch of, you know, if you need somebody within the community, people are kind of like, you know, connecting and being able to, you know, build uh, you know, 24 seven figure businesses within the community uh, and counting, um, you know, you know, how important is community for those who are in business and those who are looking to like get, you know, go from four figures to five figures or five figures to six figures or six figures, you know, to nine, eight. Right. I mean. 
I mean, it's just the fastest way to get there, yeah. really. I mean, doing it on your own, I, I feel like, is the longest way to do it yeah. because you're going to make mistakes that you don't have to make. And so having that support, um, even if it's just emotional support, even if it's just in inspirational support on the days when you feel like, oh, I just can't make it anymore. But there's someone in the group that has already overcome. Uh -huh. And so for us, the community means everything. Um, you know, to us and to the entrepreneurs. But from, from a business perspective, um, it, it just is easier when you build a community of people that trust you, right? Um, when you're throwing money at ads, it's just so expensive when you have to get to know everybody. So building that community is really important. I think people underestimate that. Uh -huh. They're just like have, getting people make a purchase, but not really taking the time to connect with them and build that community. So they have to start from scratch each time. So it's, it's good on both sides. Yeah, yeah. like Ryan said, yeah, like like having a community of people that you serve, so that you nurture them, and you're all like like I was Black American Kids Travis doesn't profit. We built a community of people that we always served and nurtured, so that when there was an ask and when there was a call to action, where there was has an event, has a conference, has this or that, mm -hmm. we could always fill it up, sell it out because we had served them so well to a point. Like I said, right, selling is really just serving. Absolutely. We had served them so well to a point when we offered something to pay. For one, many of them had already benefited from what we gave them for free. Mm. So they were like, if this is what we get for free, mm, yeah. what will the, the pay thing be like, yeah. right? So they would do that. And then as Ronnie mentioned, like also surrounding yourself with a community of like-minded people just internally around you, again, with mindset, Absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like success leaves clues. If you're trying to build your first you know, $100,000 business, the worst thing you could do is try to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. Once somebody's already built that, they could tell you like that how to get, it's nothing to get there for somebody that's already done it yeah. and they've done all the hard work, why would you try to reinvent the wheel? Yeah. And in our first business, that's what, like, like so much of what we did, right? The first um, uh, million dollars it took us to gross, like overall, just over the years, it took about three times as long as it should have because mm. we just didn't know what we were doing. Wow. And yeah. we were trying to figure it all out on our own, right? And then at a certain point, we said, you know what? We got to get educated. What did getting educated mean? That mean we had to start um, reading books, right? Reading more books. We had to start going to conferences. We had to start getting with coaches and consultants. Literally getting the information that was already out there from people that had already done it so we could get success faster. Nah, I love it. And so is it the same mindset? that takes you from six figures to seven figures? Can you can you be a, a six figure entrepreneur and then now say, you know what, I wanna take it to the next level and keep that same six figure mindset? Totally different. Okay. Totally different, okay. right? You can get the six figures off a of hustle. Ooh, say that. Like, like can, I, can I talk to the people? Talk to them, please talk to them. You can get the six figures off of a hustle. Yeah. You literally can just hustle yourself up to six figures. Like, in, in literally, right, in hindsight, like once you do it, you really look at it, we make it a lot harder than it has to be. Yeah. But when you're talking about getting to seven, yeah. when you talk about getting from one million to two, two to three, five to ten, then what What do they say, right? They say, uh, what got you here won't get you there. Get you there That's exactly what it is. Then you have to start looking at, okay, I can't do it alone. I have to build a team around me. Yeah. Okay, when I build a team around me, right, I got to make sure I develop leaders in that team because you can have a whole team, but then the whole team is pulling on you. Mm. So then you're like, man, I got a bunch of people, but now for like, you know, it's, it's worse than it was when I just did it all by myself. Yeah. Right? So then you build leaders, then you got a mission, then you, you are motivating the people that you have to say, hey, as a group, this is what the big vision is, and we're going here to take the big vision, and y'all are coming along with me, right? So, so he's like, like I always say, zero to 100 ain't nothing but product market fit. Mm. Can I find the right product, and can I find the right people to actually service and sell that product to? Mm -hmm. Once you do that, right, getting from 100,000 to multiple 300, 500, 700, 800, 9, whatever, a lot of that is all about now, I got the product and service, I just need more traffic and people to sell it to. Mm -hmm. That's when I cut on ads, that's when I get in front of people, I do joint ventures with other people, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But then once we get beyond that, it has to be like most of those seven-figure businesses are trying to figure out how to get from one million to 10. What they talking about ain't about ads most of the time. Right. It ain't about traffic or it ain't about like this new widget I got. It's about how can I develop leaders? Mm -hmm. How can I hire more people, right? Mm -hmm. How can I get people on my team? Mm -hmm. Like where can I get the talent from? Where can I, how can I delegate more things so that I'm not doing the, all of the work myself and that's what that looks like. Yeah, no, I love that, I love that. And so if you could uh, do anything over, right? Um, what would you do? Like no, knowing, right? Having a, you know multiple seven-figure business together, uh, having a beautiful building, having staff, uh, you know, creating other leaders, you know, multiple se you know seven-figure, you know, people within your community. Uh, but if you could do one thing over, right? What what would that thing be? Um, probably 
start investing more sooner, mm. you know? Mm. So just, um, it, it took us a while, but w once we started really investing in ourselves, mm. in education, um, in ads, whatever, just mm. sooner. Mm. And you know, just really apprehensive at first. And I, I see a lot of people when they start their business, they don't want to invest in ads or mm. invest in themselves, but um, I think investing more and taking that risk, I don't think that every, it, it, when I see our, our, when I look back on how our business has grown, mm -hmm. it's always been some type of big risk, some type of big move that has taken us from here to here, mm -hmm. to here to here. And I think people play it too safe. Mm -hmm. And so um, just investing more and doing it quicker, faster. And, and, and before, before you answer that though, Lamar, um, I want to stay right there for a second though, but like at what point does someone know when it's time to invest in themselves. Do you invest in yourself immediately? Do you build the business, build the minimal viable product first, test the market, and then once you get, like, like at what point do you say, you know what, I gotta start investing in myself? Hmm, I don't know, what do you think? I, I would say immediately, the only thing that, that varies is the amount you can invest. Mm. Right. But you can invest, they invest by watching your show, mm. right? But it's a lot of people that won't take the time to do that mm. because they taking the time on Netflix. Yeah. Now which one give them a greater mm. return? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiger King? <laughs> or it's out of the right, 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 like literally, but this, right, right. but this is what people doing. Yeah, but the yeah. same people will be the ones saying, "I can't build a business because I don't have the money." Yeah, I can't build a business because I don't know people. Won't nobody put me on? Yeah. and they they waiting for somebody to put them on when they can put themselves on. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's about that, and as you grow, you start to look more, and then as you as you find opportunities, like Ronnie said, because what I find is not that people don't have success; mm -hmm. is that when they don't have success, they don't go running through that door. Mm -hmm. Like, like when that, you, you kind of pivot, 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 and when you find success, you find like a slither of daylight, mm. you gotta run through it. And, mm. and I feel like too many times, we make the grossly miscalculated assumption that the opportunity will always be there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my ads take off, oh, this is cool, right? I'm gonna I'm scale them up later. Mm till Zuckerberg mess around, hit you with the flim flam, right. and then you can't scale up because stuff is twice the price. Right. Oh, you know what, I can, I'm doing events and you know, people, and I'm, I'm selling out 100, right? If I'm selling a 100 seat event, I'm trying to figure out how can we get to 1,000 seats as fast as possible? Because yeah. I'm not making the assumption. It's a lot of people that thought that they had time. Mm. A year ago, Oof. two years ago, Oof. everything got Shut rocked, down. right? You never know what's coming around that corner. So when you, gotta, when you find an opportunity, you find daylight, you gotta hit it, you gotta run fast. Yeah, love it. And so if you could, if you could do something different, what, what, what are you changing? I'm gonna I'm go a different route. I was the cat that always said, I wanted to be uh, uh, a millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. I'm be a millionaire by 30. Mm -hmm. Be a millionaire, not surprised I'm a millionaire by, by 25. Yeah. That ain't happen. Mm -hmm. That's it, I'll be a millionaire by 30. That ain't happened either, right? <laughs> and we kept, kept sliding out. Yeah, but yeah. what I realized, I always know I want to be an entrepreneur. In my pursuit of entrepreneurship, in my pursuit of always looking forward, in my pursuit of not being educated enough. Mm -hmm. I was always a reader, but I wasn't educated enough. Mm -hmm. What I missed was a grand opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was always on it. I was a young cat that was always on, all right, what's the move? So, so my day job, my day to day, always made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I spent so much of that money chasing other quick hit opportunities. Mm -hmm. When I got old and looked back, I said, I made enough money when I was in my 20s mm. that if I had invested that, mm. if I had access to information that everybody has access to now over YouTube, over the podcast, mm. and literally just invested, I would have already hit a million by the time I hit 30. Mm. But instead, I was chasing short, mm. hit opportunities, right? Yeah. Losing money, wasting money, mm. and funding my money away that I didn't really hit the big goal. And a lot of, again, was lack of education, lack yeah. of information, so yeah. if anything, I can encourage people to do is get a hold of the people that already have the solutions, that already have the answers, yeah. find out everything you can from them, pick them up as a mentor. Mm. Some people say, well, you know, I'm, I've been DMing Ash, he won't be my mentor. Mm. Sometimes you gotta pay for a mentor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Most of our mentors ain't people that said, hey, Lamar and Ronnie, we gonna take you by your hand. Mm -hmm. It was people that had a program and we said, we paying to be in the program because yeah. we gonna pay for access and information. Yeah, and yeah, no, I love that. And I love, I love what, you, what you said, uh, you, know, at, you know, as it relates to uh, just being around the right people, paying for access, um, because I think that what people think is that when they're looking for a mentor, um, the mentor is just sitting around doing nothing, waiting, <laughs> they, like, like they're waiting for you. I got time your, on my I got, time, I got nothing but time and I'm waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, you know, you know, paying for their program, paying for access, paying for their events, getting in the room, right? And being able to uh, connect with not even just them, right. connect with others because those might those be your, right, those are investors too. Um, 
Talk about, you know, traffic sales and profit live, right? Because, uh, you know, I, you know, that the energy is different. And, 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 and why is that important to be in a room? Right. I think it's important because we, we go to a lot of conferences and sometimes we are the only ones that look like us. Mm. Like if it's 3000 people, there may be 50 black people or 50 minorities, oh, you know. Uh -huh. And so one thing I think is just important for us to have a, a place where we all can come to see other people being successful in their businesses, but also learning from them. I think sometimes it's just a barrier as far as people really relating and connecting to what people are saying on stage. And so that's why I think it's important. Important. That's why I think um, we make sure that our conferences are like a family reunion. Yeah, like yeah. it's just like you just feel so comfortable there and it's so much fun. But you're going to learn just if you can just take one nugget away, your business is going to be changed. So. Yeah. And, and we do we do two a year. We do TSP live in June. We do TSP game plan in January. Mm -hmm. And like Ronnie, what we found is that like Ronnie said, we went to other conferences. Only did they not look like us, but that was where a lot of the best information was. Mm -hmm. And we would go back home and say, hey, y'all, guess what? They showing how to get to the money. Come with us. Yeah. And then we turn around. Ain't nobody there. Right. So at a certain point, we said we got to get the information and bring it back to our community. So through the events, like Ronnie said, it's it's fun. It's entertaining. But we bring in six, seven, eight figure business owners to that stage for you to directly learn from. Mm -hmm. Like like and they not like, hey, I'm here and then I'm ghost right afterwards. They hanging out in the lobby all night. Yeah. They in the restaurant. They at the boss. You can build a relationship and get your questions answered. Yeah. And, and, and it's not a lot of places where you can sit in seats full of black success, mm -hmm. where ain't nobody pretentious, ain't nobody tripping, ain't yeah. a whole lot of ego, right? If you got a lot of ego, you ain't gonna feel right in the room mm -hmm. and you're probably not gonna come back. Mm -hmm. But literally people have a heart for helping other people like them mm -hmm. and getting to it, right? Um, Janice Bryan Howroyd, the mm -hmm. first black woman to build a billion dollar business. Yes. We've had her on the stage. Nice. Uh, Alfred. Oh, that's our OG. Oh, man, right? Yeah, yeah, Senior yeah, yeah. VP Black Inter We've yeah. had Alfred Evan Jr. on it. So, so we're mixing in um, uh, today's new entrepreneurs yes. with some of the real icons and gems yeah. of black business, putting them all in a room, throwing in our DJ, shout out to DJ Cento, yeah, yeah. Um, throwing in the energy and community yeah. in there and showing people that, hey, like, the goal ain't for you to come in and take a bunch of notes. Mm. The goal is for you to come here and get one, two, three actionable nuggets. Yeah. And if you can go and implement them nuggets, it'll change your business. You change your business, you change your life. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And so I want to go back to something you said about, you know, really once you go through that door, like you got to run through. And I remember uh, being at a mastermind um, and Stedman was there, right? And Stedman was talking Y'all about- Y'all on first name basis like that. I Goodness mean, you gracious. know, nah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but, but, but Stedman was there and he talked about um, business, people in business being so quick to pivot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying that, you know, let's say like an author, right? Cause I, you know, I, I focus on building wealth around books. He said an author sell a thousand copies of a book and then write another book Instead of focusing on, all right, if I did a thousand, how do I get to ten thousand? How do I get to a million, right? And so um, I see that a lot, where people have a level of success, and then because they're successful in that thing, they're quick to like pivot. So, I, so people don't realize this. I've been in the book business for twelve years, mm. and I'm not pivoting. I realize that in two thousand nine that by being an author, I created authority and I was able to create, you know, uh, uh, different streams of incomes through that book. So I'm not pivoting. I might present my books in different ways. I might do different things, but, but I see it a lot where I'm like, yo, bro, you was just, you was do doing this two years ago. And then now you're doing something totally different. That's a whole different business to like what you said, where they like they like they chasing the quick hit when the long term play is finding that one thing that you're good at and like go all in. Right. Are, are you guys seeing that like as well? Because they don't want to do the work Ooh. because it really does take work. Like Lamar said, you can hustle up to the 1000 books, yeah. but really putting the energy in to really building something. It really takes work. So they're not saying, oh, this is not easy anymore. Let me go here. Let me go there. And so I just see it too much. Like yeah. people just don't want to put the work in. Mm. And, and I think entrepreneurs in general, right? One of the biggest things that cripples them is a lack of singular focus. Mm. 
Because what happens as soon as you sell a thousand books, everybody coming to you like, you need to do the book on this. Yeah. What about the book on that? What about the book on that? So you start thinking about all the other books. Yeah. Then somebody like, teach me how to do the book. Mm. And then you like, man, my book just got released last month. Right. But now I'm book coach extraordinaire, I'm right? I'm on it. I'm a guru. I'm coach. So literally, <laughs> right, we're so programmed that, hey, now I got to have multiple streams of income. What yeah. they create is multiple streams of struggle. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Like, like that's all these streams that ain't streams because ain't nothing flowing through none of them. Right. I, I tell people all the time, the main number one reason. Can I share the number one reason Please. most entrepreneurs never build a seven-figure business? Please, talk to me. Even, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clarify. The main reason most successful, they mean they got something going. Yeah. Successful entrepreneurs can't get to a million dollars a year mm -hmm. in revenue in their business is because they got two or three $100,000 businesses. Oh, say that, yeah. So they chasing all these small things and yeah. chasing all them different small things is stopping you from getting to the one big thing that you can just lock in on and go hard on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that, that's, that's bars, right? And so, Say that one more time. You got you got you got to look in, in in the camera and tell them that, right? So yeah, you got to say that one more right. time. Let me stop playing with y'all, right? <laughs> you must have. You want to be a business owner. You must have singular focus. The number one thing that is stopping most successful, right? You already you already got something moving. Most successful entrepreneurs from getting to seven figures, right? That's at least a million dollars in revenue per year. Is the fact that they got two and three one hundred thousand dollar hustles. And having your, your focus spread across those multiple things is stopping the one thing from going all the way. Just like we talked about, like, hey, when you find that, that daylight, you got to run through it. You can't run through it if part of your time is here, part of your time is there, part of your time you're trying to, you know, coach people on something you just learned and started. Like, we got to stop looking for the quick money and look for the long money. That's the real money. That's, that's the generational shifting money. That's the your kids ain't got to do the things you did money. But not only that, their kids and the kids that come after them don't have to do it. That's when your great, great, great grandkids, they know your name. And you know why they know your name? Mm. Cause they getting money from you and they ain't never met you. Mm. Go ahead, Pastor. Um, <laughs> yo, <laughs> he jumping big bar. All right, and so uh, I, I need I need some advice, right? Because you know you alluded to this. Um, you know, pandemic hit. People had to pivot. Like people weren't, yeah. you know, expecting a shutdown. Um, a lot of people had to like readjust. Um, there might be an entrepreneur right now that is. Um, you know, doing their thing, um, and for whatever reasons, you know, there, there might be tough times coming or whatever, right? Um, or they might be going through tough times. Um, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur that is currently in a, uh, in a tough time or, or, or they're struggling? I think you said it earlier, right? It's that P word, pivot. Mm. Like, like sometimes we get so stuck on what we do and the way that we do, that, hey, guess what? In this entrepreneurial journey, you gonna have to shift. You gonna have to bob and weave a little bit when things happen. If you get so stuck, right, when you should be bobbing, you not, you get hit dead on. So during the pandemic, they said, just in that, that first quarter, right, the spring of that first year, they said four out of 10 black businesses were no longer here by the time we got to the end of spring. Mm -hmm. What I tell people all the time is that whenever there's crisis, there's opportunity. Mm -hmm. Can I repeat that one time, right? Again. Talk, talk to him. Let me tell y'all, whenever there's crisis, there's opportunity. Whenever there's crisis, there's also a transfer of wealth. The problem up to this point is that whenever there's crisis and a transfer of wealth, we're never in the middle of it. We, we, like, so we have to get educated, insert ourselves in the middle. You insert yourself in the middle by saying, okay, I see crisis coming. So instead of balling up in a corner and, and being afraid of what's coming, you you pull out your, your switchblade, right? Whatever you need, right? You say, I'm, I'm getting in this fight, Jack, yeah. and I'm, I'm jumping in here. And you start to say, what will people need that they didn't need before? What are the opportunities that will be created that didn't exist before? How will things shift? And, and the beauty of it is now, you know, before now, there's a lot of people that hadn't been through anything this major. Right. Like depending on how old they are, what the age are, they hadn't faced. Now you all have faced a major life experience. So you have the ability to look back and say, I remember when the pandemic started and things changed. These were opportunities. This is how things came up. These are the people that got rich. Everybody didn't get poor. Right. Everybody didn't lose everything. A lot of our clients had their best quarters, best years ever. You have to be able to identify the opportunity. No, I love that. I love that. And then so um, there's somebody who has a nine to five right now. And they like they 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 double dutch and they ready they like they like all right we going we I'm 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 gonna do it they double dutching but they ain't really take that leap yet 
Uh, what advice would you give for that side hustler, for that person that's that's in that nine to five? They know they want to be entrepreneurs, but they need you know they need that that push or or you know to to get to that to that. So I, I'm always the planner and, and things like that. So number one, just stay consistent. Mm. Um, stay consistent with whatever it is. It's going to be some long hours. It's going to take some sacrifice to really be dedicated toward your craft because we started off like in our bedroom with four kids, mm. you know. Um, so that's number one. But number two, I would say don't worry about the flashy cars and things like get out of debt. Mm. That was the biggest thing for us when we wanted to start our business and leave our corporate jobs mm -hmm. is that we had to get out of debt. We, I, 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 I had an old um, Honda minivan that one door didn't open. I went from that to my Porsche. Yeah, yeah. People see that Porsche now, but I say I had that minivan probably in 2019. <laughs> you know, I had it for a long time, yeah, yeah. and it was paid off, yeah, and I was yeah. fine with it, and I could afford uh, something more than that for a long time. But I didn't have that that payment, you know. And so I just want to let people know, like I know they see a lot of people being successful right now, and they want to look like that. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing is put in the hours and stay consistent yeah. and get out of debt mm -hmm. because when you have that freedom to invest in your business business, you can do things. So you can you can pivot and bob and weave and things. But you have a big old mortgage mm -hmm. and credit card bills and shoe bills and things like that. You can't really make those decisions that you need to make for your business. And we were able to do that by um, being able to get out of debt. He was able to leave his job. We were still on one income, mm -hmm. but yet we were still comfortable because why? Wow, we didn't have a whole bunch of debt. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way we lived for a, a long time. Um, just our personal debt, yeah. you know, not yeah. business debt, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know the other thing we did? Yeah. Move to Atlanta. Mm. I tell everybody, hey, uh -oh. Atlanta's open. No, I'm just playing. Uh, right, people, people in Atlanta don't no, like telling no, other people to come to Atlanta. Whole, the whole no. crew, the whole crew went away. No, people in Atlanta no. like that. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But, but, but really, we came, and the only reason we came is because at that time, everyone I knew that was doing what I wanted to do yeah. lived here. Mm, mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to extract yourself from your environment you at. If the people where you're at are not doing the things that you want to do, yeah. you literally have to pick up and move to that place where, hey, like, like, and I was, I'm from uh, uh, Merlin, right? Nobody can tell that yeah. by my DMV vernacular, <laughs> right, right, right. right? Merlin, uh, Merlin, from the area, yeah, U R E A, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, there was a lot of, it's a lot of black success there, yeah. but a lot of us was through employment. Mm -hmm. Everybody I knew that was an entrepreneur that was doing it in the digital space was here. Mm -hmm. So I said, guess what? Mm -hmm. Guess who we need to be? Yeah where the people at. So it may not be Atlanta, it could be any other place in the country or the world, yeah. but you got to get around again, successful people, successfully clues, man, yeah. all the time. Yeah, no, I love that, I love that. All right, so I, I want to pivot because you talked about the Porsche, right? And so um, we love to ask our guests this, right? So, so being able to create, uh, you know, multiple seven-figure business, what would y'all say is the most extravagant thing you guys have done with money so far? <laughs> Well, I'm tight. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what? Cause, oh, we. Oh no. And no, I was, well, I I don't know if it's extravagant, right? We just took our whole family to Africa mm -hmm. um, a couple of months ago. That joint's a little more expensive than I thought it might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had we had a great time. We took all the kids. We took Ronnie's parents. Nice. Um, so we had a great time with that. But to tell you the truth, most of what I do is I'm reinvesting, mm. cause I'm like millions ain't the goal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 I think a lot of times because, and this is new to us, right? Yeah. Like, it ain't like, oh, we came from this, so we, this is new to us. Yeah. But a lot of times when things are new to, I, I, I warn my clients all the time. Mm. I think sometimes you can get so caught looking behind you and saying, wow, I came from mm. back there mm. all the way here that you don't see what's in front of you. Yeah. So it could be new for somebody that's watching and say, hey, you know what? Like, wow, I'm the first millionaire in my family. This is amazing. Yeah. But what if 200 million is available? Mm. What if 500 million is available? So a lot of what we do is I'm looking for other ways to activate the funds that we bring in mm -hmm. to generate more funds mm -hmm. so that what we create, right? It benef and that's benefiting us now, but it's also benefiting our team and employees, yeah. right? Yeah. Like our employees and our team to come on when they c and we got like regular, you know, W-2, they got benefits and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I got a wealth academy. Mm -hmm. I call it like the Tyler New Media Wealth Academy inside of our business where we give them education, mm -hmm. we give them a, a higher than normal uh, twice, right? 2X what normally everybody else does, mm -hmm. uh, 401k matching, we match them twice. Mm -hmm. We do profit sharing. Mm -hmm. We just gave everybody their, their distribution profit sharing for last year, people been with us. And then like, like literally so, it's not just about us, like we trying to reinvest that into the longer thing mm -hmm. so that we literally shift, right? All of these families around us in our entire community. Mm -hmm. 
I love that because like, man, it, it's so true uh, that people are always looking back, right? People are always looking behind them and saying, man, yo, I'm like, I'm the first to graduate. I'm the first of this. I'm the first of that. Um, and then not realizing that where you are right now, if you didn't look back and you look forward, like you could be, you could be more than what, what you're looking at because what you're looking at um, and comparing it to where you are is actually limited belief, right? It's limited because it's like, it, 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 it's like having the, 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 the mentality of saying at least, right? Like at least I made it to a millionaire because look where I started. It could have went this other way. Instead of saying at most, I'd be a what multi-billionaire. And that's it. You know, yeah. what I tell people all the time, where you are at, what you've done, it should be celebrated. Yes. But it's the milestone, it's not the peak. Mm. Right? If you're going up that mountain, like it's the mile. People say, well, you know what? Nobody in my family has ever had a six-figure business, right? A lot of people, when they start, they say, I just want to get to six figures. When they get to six figures, I say that's cool, but six figures is not the top of the mountain. Yeah. It's just a milestone. So yeah. pat yourself on the back, say, hey, that was great, and keep going. Because mm. it's six figures, what most people don't tell you, right? It's a lot of information floating around. Most people don't tell you, if you had a good job, when you make six figures in revenue in your business, you're probably getting paid less mm. than your job paid you. Mm. And this new job you got, that's all it is, a job. You create a new job for yourself. Mm. Mm. And the new job ain't got no benefits. Yeah. The, the new job, yeah. right? You working two, three times the hours. You was complaining about the 42 you was putting in there. <laughs> right, right. When you working for yourself and you might be starting out, you might be putting in 80 strong yeah. every week. Yeah. The joint killing your, your, all your extracurriculars you was doing, right? You ain't got none of them. Yeah. But you got a six figure business. So yeah, you know, celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But it's a milestone. Yeah. It's only one leg of the journey. It's not the final destination. Yeah, I love that. And so what, what would you say um, is the most impactful thing that you guys have done with money? Uh, the most impactful thing uh, that we've done with money, uh -huh. besides starting our business, uh -huh. um, I would say per, for personally or for other people. Um, I mean, you you tell me. I mean, it it, it, could, it could be it could be personal. So, I mean, for me, the most impactful thing I, I do feel like I do feel the difference now as yeah. far as being able to to do what I want to do and to get the things that I want to get and to be able to, you know, get things for my parents and for my kids uh -huh, and uh -huh. just be able to support them. So I'm just like really getting comfortable yeah. in that right yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah, ask yeah. me that next year. Okay, but, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I think that that's it. I mean, we were able to, you know, pay off our house and we we're buying real estate and things like that. So nice. um, I think that that's impactful, okay. but I really just think that. So the private jet is next year. No, no. <laughs> but I just, just, I just think the most impactful thing is just how we're impacting the people in our community, yeah, really. Yeah. Um, and just seeing how we impact the people that um, are cl our clients and seeing them be able to um, hire people and hire other people in the community. So yeah. I, I just really feel that that's impactful. We were able to go out and visit one of our um, clients last week and went to their multiple buildings and saw all of their employees nice. and just to think that when we started working with them they were um just kind of like solopreneurs yeah. and so um that's impact yeah. that's like real impact to the to community so yeah. I, yeah. I, don't know. I love that and, and no, but i'll say i'll say this uh, for the record right <laughs> the um impact is real to your community uh because i i, I came to see tyler i came to see labar um I, to see the building we had a, a five minute conversation maybe, and his advice in five minutes made me multiple five figures uh, in one day. Yeah. One day. I believe it. I mean, Lamar like lives this stuff. Yeah, like sure. I'm sitting here like, uh-huh. I, like, I yeah, hear yeah, this yeah, stuff sure. like, <laughs> I hear it all the time and I still yeah. get excited. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah, like that's my first time here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he like yeah, really yeah. lives it and breathes it. So, yeah. and I think that that's the difference with our community because yeah. he's just so passionate about it. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is. And how, how, how does that feel though, right? How does that feel to like, um, how you, I mean, I, I could use the word responsible, but like to be, responsible or to have that level of impact right because you know again i you know i you know i say oh yeah you know five minutes lamar you know help help me make multiple five figures in one day but that doesn't all go in my pocket right because because i you know i got a team and i got you know there's i have to reinvest and there's things that 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 ha has to happen and so not only did that five minute conversation impact me but it also impact the people that I was able to, you know, you know, further help mm. with that, right? And so, how does it feel to have that level of impact 
um, or responsibility. Or Because the truth of the matter, though, is if y'all don't show up, there's a lot of families that can't feed their kids. I, I say that's the importance of finding what you really here to do. Mm. Like, I feel like I was born for this. Mm, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in like, everything you do leads up to the point that you're at. Yeah. So every business I tried to fail, yeah. it leads up to here, right? Yeah. Like, like everything, I used to do parties. I used to do events, right? Then when we did events, when we started doing the film screens, we hold our own film screeners because I was so used to promoting parties and trying to get people in the places. Yeah. So it was nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Then when we did the movies, what we didn't know is that was the precursor to us doing TSP Live and TSP Game Plan and getting hundreds and in the future thousands of people into a business conference because we had done hundreds of people into the actual screen. And so everything leads you to this point. I feel like I was born for this, mm. right? We, we set a goal two years ago. We said by the time we get to 2022, we want to have directly through our programs, um, have worked with or birthed um, 37 figure businesses, five eight figure businesses. Mm -hmm. At the time, we might have had like two or three seven figure companies, mm -hmm. right? And we was one of them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. like, like it wasn't there. Sometimes <laughs> right. you gotta cast the vision, yeah. create the vision, mm -hmm. and then once you got a goal and a plan, Ronnie's a project manager by trade, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So so I'm the visionary. Yeah. I'm a cowboy, I'm out here with my host, I'm shooting <laughs> right. ideas left and right. right. Ronnie can form it into just the actual plan for us to execute, yeah. right? So again, strengths, strengths and weaknesses together, we support each other in that way, Absolutely. But but being able to pull that together, um, like right now, say we want to get to 30 companies by next year, we're at 24. Mm -hmm. We want to get to five eight-figure companies, right? We got two companies come through our programs that's already hit eight figures. That's at least $10 million a year. Mm -hmm. We got three more that's hit it this year. Yeah. We already casted a new vision. We said by the time we get to December 31st, 2030, and I'm saying it, this is, I'm saying it on YouTube. Hey. It's going to be here. Yeah. I said, by the time we get to December uh, 31st, 2030, we want to have worked with 500 seven-figure companies, mm. 58-figure companies. Mm five nine-figure companies. Mm. And then I was at the office talking to my man Tommy Traffic. I ran the numbers down to him. He said, if you're doing all that, you might as well have one with a billion dollar valuation. So again, you got to create, I, I tell the team this, right? I got, I got goosebumps. I'm I got, like, got, man, got, that's the, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. Alex from my team here now. She'll tell you, I tell the team this all the time. I say, when we get to 2030, we are black history. Yes, facts. Right? But, but, and more important than that, What's the impact, like you said? Mm -hmm. Ronnie talked about the butterfly effect. Yeah. When we help uh, uh, Kim and Tim, Curl Mix in Chicago, right? They got like 30-something people working for them now on the south side of Chicago, yeah. black and brown. Mm -hmm. uh, we was in uh, uh, Richmond last week celebrating um, Sharice and Keon from Sassy Jones. Mm -hmm. Like, Ronnie, they got multiple buildings. Mm -hmm. They got people all around. And this, this is the other thing. This, this is the, the most unknown, known thing ever. Mm -hmm. In most of our communities, we got the highest rates of unemployment. Mm -hmm. Why? Most people hire people that look like them. Yes. Most of our businesses don't hire nobody. Yes. Nine out of 10 black businesses don't have employees. They yeah. solopreneurships. Yeah. So literally, I'm not talking about, again, how can we build hustles? Mm. That's cool, right? Sometimes you gotta you know, make a side hustle, your main hustle, all that. But at some point, I need some soldiers that's gonna build businesses. Yeah. That's gonna say, hey, I'm looking for 20, 30, 50, 100 people to hire. I ain't gonna employ shame nobody for being employed. Mm -hmm. Man, I ain't never gonna shame nobody for taking care of their family, right? right? We say, well, I ain't like working for the people because they ain't care about me. Well, guess what? Hire some people and care about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Create yeah. opportunity for yeah. them. Yeah. Get them an avenue for wealth. Yeah. Everybody ain't an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. But still, everybody can be an investor. Yeah. And that's the difference. Mm. No, I love that. I love that. All right, so we're going to do um, what's called our, our lightning round, our speed round. Um, and what we do is we take uh, banking terms and then we flip those terms so that they could be here with us inside the vault. Um, and so the first term we're going to do is deposit slip. Um, a deposit slip is the, the piece of paper that you take, you bring it in the bank, you fill it out, you deposit money inside the bank. For us, a deposit slip is a money mistake, a slip up that you've done with money. And so, so far in your business or in your life, what has been your biggest deposit slip? Mm. I, I, I Look, Ronnie looked at, at Lamar like, she was like, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, I, I feel like most of the time it's not activating money fast enough to work on your behalf, mm -hmm. right? And again, yeah. like most of it came from just a lack of education. Yeah. A lot of times you got to be careful. When you're the first one in your family to do the things that you do, mm -hmm. right, it's a road that's not paved. Yeah. 
You ain't got uncle or gramps or whoever to be like, hey, you know, these are the things A, B, C, D. So you have to, as quickly as possible, tap into other people, again, that already been there, the information, the coaches, consultants, masterminds, or whatever it is, so that when you're in position, as soon as you get a hold of it, you already know where to go. So most of it, it was sitting on money that we had, not actually activating it, so that that money began to work for us. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it, love it. Second term is charge off, right? And so charge off, you borrow money from the bank, you don't pay it back, certain, they're they, they gonna try to get it back, but at some point they're like, all right, I'm wiping my hands off, I'm charging this off. Uh, for us inside the vault, charge off are, you know, what type of people or mindsets did you have to charge off during your journey? Um, oh gosh, I'm gonna only think about relationship people to charge off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come back to us, come back to us. You married, 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 married. Come back. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying though, I, people, people let like these fake things hold them in like the current situation that they're in and whether that's the job. I can remember um, when I needed to leave my job and I um, was like, I want to get laid off because I want severance. You know, like they give you like, you know, two months of severance. I got to get this severance. And I probably stayed there a year or two longer because I just had to have that severance. And then when I I left and I had that severance, it was gone in like 10 weeks. I could have been like working. (laughs) I could have been working my business the whole time. And so sometimes you just um, people just have those fake things. Oh, I can't leave my business because um, I can't leave my job because I have medical insurance and I can't I can't leave because of that. And I'm like, just go find a plan. It's really not that expensive. If it's maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars more expensive than what your, you know, your employer. So I just say charge off all those like limitations that you have that are preventing you from going to that next level. Yeah, you know, yeah. or I can't leave this relationship because this man owe me money or this, this or this or that. And yeah. I say. Charge all of that off. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. I know before Lamar, I was in a relationship. That person owed me tens of thousands of dollars. I was just like, I don't want none of it. Yeah. I want to be free so yeah. I can move on and go to the next level. Yeah. So sometimes you have to kind of let some things go yeah. and like charge those off, if I'm using that right, yeah. Yeah. to get to that next level. I'm going to say charge off people with a mindset of lack, mm-hmm. right? It's a lot of people who um, think they don't have enough and they start to project that on you mm. if you're too close to them. Yeah. It's people that think um, they could, you could be in business, they could be in business. They think it's not enough business for both of y'all. Mm. And what I say, unless you like McDonald's or Walmart or something, believe me, right? Like most people I've seen ain't got nowhere close enough to scratch the surface yeah. to where they holding down a monopoly on any industry that we touching, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think people with a mindset of lack, where they think it's not enough, it's not enough to go around, it's not enough for you to eat and for me to eat. It's, it's um, you know, I don't want you to have this information that I got. I got the key I can't share. You talk like you came to it. I was like, you doing what? Yeah. Oh, were you doing this? Yeah. Because you could kill it with this, yes. right? Yeah. Because that's the thing. I know if I help enough people get the information, I'll never want for anything. Exactly. Yeah. If I tell you something, and that's, you say, if you say, all right, I made multiple five figures in that one day, the beauty of it is because you got singular focus, mm-hmm. you won't continue doing it. Oh, yeah. And then when you flip it, it's going to become a, a, from a multiple five figure thing to a six figure yeah. thing to more and more. Yeah. So over the course of our relationship, if I make you millions of dollars, mm-hmm. if I ever need something, mm-hmm. it's going to be like, no. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a fact. Man, try it. Yeah. I'm be all in your YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. Like, this the cat 10 years ago. Yeah. But no, nah, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. that, man, people with a mindset of lack, I can't do it. Yeah. All right, no, nah, I love that, love that. All right, last but not least, trust account, right? Um, you know, your trust account is where you take all your valuable assets, you put it in that trust account, you preserve it, you protect it, you help it grow. Um, in your journey, uh, what kind of people or mindsets would you say is in your trust account? Mm, you start them on. So I would say um, definitely our parents, mm. right? They they like been instrumental to us in this journey, not just from they, you know, what they taught us, but like literally as us being adults, us being like we got four kids and we started, we had four small kids for them watching the kids, for them holding us down, for them supporting us at events and supporting the things we do. Um, and I would say like there's so many people in our community, right? Uh, that literally are like now we can do something they, and people in TSP is like, I've been following y'all since, you know, I watched Generation One and we did a screen and all again. Like we were doing movies, people doing screenings in their living rooms, in their community centers, in their churches, other movies. So like that community of people that's been holding us down, they want to see us succeed. Mm-hmm. 
and, and they appreciate that we reciprocate that back, right? And we're trying to sow into them so they can be successful with us. And it's not a one-sided thing. And then mostly I would just say like, like I'm blessed to where a lot of our clients now are friends. Mm -hmm. In those relationships, man, I like treasure them so much that even once we get past a point where they're no longer, you know, they can stop being clients, they no longer paying us money. Mm -hmm. Like we just love to be together because we've had a journey together up to this point and they can, you know, impart things into me. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I can impart things into them and we can keep going higher. Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love that. Just being around people that are going through what we're doing at this level. Uh, uh -huh. So that's definitely, and definitely our parents. I mean, my, my father, he had this carpet cleaning business when I was young. He made me and my sister work at it, <laughs> you know, cleaning carpets and stuff. But um, I just know that just their work ethic and yeah. their determination, I think that's where, you know, where I got it from. So yeah. definitely my parents. Yeah. yeah, love it, love it. All right, y'all, listen, if y'all, listen, if y'all ain't get more than enough in this interview, then again, I don't know what y'all was watching. I don't know what y'all was doing. Rewind it back. Make sure you do not multitask. Get your pen, your paper, because there was bars dropped on this episode that can make you multiple six figures, multiple seven figures. Make sure y'all tap in with the Tylers. Uh, but if somebody wanted to connect with y'all, where can they find y'all? Ronnie, give me a social. <laughs> That's a joke. Like, Ronnie's not fooling with y'all on social media. I'm letting y'all know. You get your feelings hurt. Ronnie's not fooling with y'all on social media. Not um, uh, but you can just follow us right at uh, Traffic Sales and Profit um, at Lamar Tyler on Instagram and then the website www.trafficsalesandprofit.com. That'll link you to a free copy of my book, a paperback copy. I'll send you for free. All you do is pay shipping and handling. It'll link you to our conferences, TSP Live and TSP Game Plan. And most importantly, our free Facebook group, Traffic Sales and Profit with Lamar Tyler. Tons of information. We do free trainers there every month. We want to see you succeed. All right, y'all. There you have it. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. We are closing out the vault. All right, y'all. Follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Follow me, Ash Cash, on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the entire planet. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I'll see y'all next time in God's will. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't ask cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.